All, all I wanted to do tonight was get back here on YouTube and get back to honoring my commitment to watch and review all the TNG episodes. And then, and then, Code of Honor. What is going on YouTube? It is your boy, the world-renowned historian. Am I cool enough to, to say your boy and referring to myself in the first person? Can I pull that off? Yeah, I don't think so either. And we are back here with some TNG projects. Now, what is the TNG project? I don't blame you if you don't remember. I've been into sci-fi and fantasy my entire life. Never really got into Star Trek that much. As weird as that sounds. But then I realized the TNG is almost entirely on Prime, if not every single season. So I said, hey, I'll just watch whatever's up there and kind of give my reviews and comment and critique it in real time as I watch it. Just another fat neck beard on the internet talking about Star Trek. I'm wearing this hoodie, by the way, because it is freezing in my house right now. I actually had to turn on the heat for the first time. Got that burning dust smell in the air. It smells like ass in my room, but... At least I'm keeping all my fingers and toes tonight. So anyway, as you saw just a second ago, basically nobody likes this episode that we're about to watch. Brent Spiner, Jonathan Frakes both said it was just racist garbage. Uh, fans say that it is not only the worst TNG episode, they say it's the worst Star Trek thing ever created. Ever! So without further ado, let's just get this piece of shit over with. Again, in case you forgot, no, it's been a couple of months. I don't really like do like a careful edited review of these. This is more just like I watch about 10 minutes of it and we go back over it in real time. And then I come back and say, okay, here's what I thought about that bit. Maybe my thoughts change by the end of the episode, but anyway, that's kind of the gimmick. So without further ado, all right, y'all, this episode starts with the gang going to a planet called Lagoon 2. They're getting a vaccine for a sickness that is afflicting Cyrus, Cypress 4, I think that's what that says. They're beaming the welcoming party aboard, and we learn that they're insisting on using their own uh, beaming equipment. That's going to be important for later. So the Lagodians come on board, and we've heard all this about how they're this proud, stoic, noble people. And Picard hears that they're using their own beaming equipment, and he's like, it's fine. It's their way. So they actually come on board... And it's a bunch of black dudes dressed like they're doing a high school play for Black Panther. The leader has like this cliche red carpet rolled out in front of him. And everybody's dressed like Aladdin and the Arabian Nights or whatever. And the leader finally beams in and it's this guy, Luton. He's the, this big muscular black guy. And he's all surprised because uh, Picard's there with all of his uh, officers. And he's all very surprised that uh, Lieutenant Yar, as a woman, is the head of security. And Luton's security guy go, goes to offer like a vaccine sample to Picard and Yar stops him and he's like, get off me, girl. And uh, Yar like does like a judo move on him and like throws him. And then Luton's like, oh, she may just be what I need. But in any case, the Lagonians get invited to stay for a while. We hear that they have a similarity to some kind of Earth culture. I wonder what that could be. Luton eventually says that he's going to make the vaccine available to everybody who needs it. Uh, everybody claps. And then he asks to see one of their uh, famed holodecks, as he puts it in his weird, like, fake African voice. So Yar eventually ends up taking him to the holodeck. And she makes like a, a guy in a karate gi so that she can like demonstrate some Aikido. And there's kind of an interesting line here where Luton is like, you can make people without souls. And she's like, oh, it's not a real guy. Maybe kind of an interesting thing that we could have followed up on. But anyway, Yar kicks the shit out of the hologram. Luton's security guy gets his ass whooped by the hologram. And then Luton kidnaps Yar using his beaming equipment. Remember we said a second ago that was going to be important. Picard is like trying to reach him, but he's ignoring him over the uh, intercoms. And we hear from Troy, who's of course the, the psychic empath, that she felt uh, sexual needs 
from Luton toward towards Yar. Even more than that, it was avarice and, and greed. And she said that Yar reciprocated, but the, the, it was like this like animalistic ambition and greed and like lust she felt from Luton. Okay, so isn't this a thing? Like, isn't this like a, a whole... I don't even want to say meme. It was a whole like cliche, like well before memes ever existed, right? It was like the the big muscular buff black guy can't resist like the the, the blonde Aryan looking white woman. Am I crazy? Like I don't know. Seems weird. Seems weird. They thought this was a good idea. <sighs> this is so bad. Okay. Dr. Crusher comes in and tells Picard that she can't replicate the vaccine, that it has to be the actual vaccine coming from the Ligonians. And then they have another weird conversation about Wesley. I feel like this is like four episodes in a row. Like, the writing... If I'm writing these lines, it's to suggest that Picard has some connection to Wesley. Like, I predicted that he was his father just based on how they're writing it. But it's all like, oh, I gotta talk to you about my son Wesley, and Picard gets all awkward and weird, and then, like, he begrudgingly, like lets him come on the bridge which is actually what happens next wesley that is is hilariously like hiding in the elevator and you can just see his arm and picard's all stern just like wesley get out here and he calls him onto the bridge and he's like go and sit at ops and everybody on the bridge is like really picard's like am i are you all deaf and wesley goes and sits at ops and it's another wesley scene he's just an 80s teenager i don't really get why people hate the character so much at least not yet just a teenage 80s character, man. Kind of a strange line where uh, Data's going off about French and he says some obscure language and Picard's like, Data, for hundreds of years, French represented civilization. Feels like maybe kind of a out-of-date sort of cultural attitude. Eventually gets around to the fact that Picard has to go and politely ask to get Lieutenant Yar back. And he's like, I'm not asking for shit. They took her, I'm demanding her back. But it's Troy and Riker who are like, no, you kind of got to go by their code. This is how they, this is how they do things. So Picard eventually reluctantly agrees, and he does go to visit Luton in his uh, palace, which basically looks like it's like a mosque in Baghdad. We meet Lutan's first wife, who is called Yarina. We don't know if he named her after Lieutenant Yar after he got taken with Lieutenant Yar, or if he picked Yar because it was so close to Yarina's name, or if there was no connection at all. We don't know that. But anyways, Picard demands to see Lieutenant Yar, make sure I don't get her and Yarina mixed up, and eventually Luton does have her brought out, and Picard's like, yo, you good? And she's like, yeah, I'm fine, but check out these guards I beat up. Her guard kind of has like a black eye, it was kind of a nice touch. So then there's the banquet. There's a guy juggling axes, there's a lot of people sitting around playing drums, being cliche Africans. And I will say this, the sets look fantastic. Like, there, there's like a sunset kind of a raid behind uh, Luton and his, you know, main council or crew or whatever. I don't know, there's just something about these 80s practical sets that I just, it, it just does something for me. It re reminds me a lot of like the desert backgrounds in Spaceballs. I know that's a weird reference, but they look cool. Picard asks politely for Lieutenant Yarback, and Luton's like, yeah, I'm gonna give you this vaccine, but uh, I'm keeping your white blonde lady. And then Yarina gets up and is like, no, you didn't. I'm gonna challenge her to fight to the death. And Picard's like, nope, that's not happening. And then Luton gets up and is like, well, then you don't get anything. You don't get no vaccine. You don't get no Lieutenant Yar. I guess they're gonna fight to the death for Luton. Luton's two babes fighting to the death for him. And he's into it. So Troy pretty much tricks Yar into admitting that she finds Lutan attractive. She doesn't, she's not in love with him, she says, but she does find him attractive. And she's really mad at Troy for getting her to divulge this information. And then Troy says that she gets it because he's such a basic male image. Basic male image. Does anybody have any idea what that means? Basic male image. It's a basic male. It's a basic bro. Is there a male equivalent to the basic bitch? Is Troy calling Lutan a basic bitch? Signature traits of all male basic bitches? I'm still confused. Crusher and Riker discuss the flu and how it's getting worse to kind of try to increase the stakes of the episode. They may have sensed that the tension is flagging here. Troy finally convinces Picard that the fight's the only way to go, that it is in fact not a great idea, but their only idea. So Picard goes to visit Lutan and they have a conversation, and Lutan asks Picard, what do you know of needs and feelings? 
and Picard admits that as the captain, he's not allowed to give in to such things all that often. Picard asks Lutan why he's so hot to trot over this, and uh, Lutan's security officer, Hagar, starts to tell him, and then Lutan shuts him up. Very kind of a silly moment. Like, Hagar would absolutely not let that information go, but whatever. It's becoming more and more clear that Lutan just wants Yarina's land, and he's, in fact, hoping that Yar will kill Yarina so he can inherit her land, and then he can be together with Yar. Happy little family. And he has the line, A coat of honor protects you like a magic cloak which I guess means that he's just hiding behind his principles and he doesn't actually believe any of this stuff. We get kind of a cute scene between uh, Data and Jordy where uh, Jordy's shaving and Data's like, Jordy, why didn't you use the, the razor that I got you to maximize the efficiency? And Jordy talks about how when you're a human being, you don't necessarily maximize efficiency, yada, yada, yada. It's maybe kind of cliche material, but it works because the actors are great. Picard orders Data and Geordi to analyze the weapons of the Ligonians. They're asking him to look at, uh, you know, sharp edges and potential poisons and stuff like that. It's essentially something to give them something to do for the rest of the episode. Lieutenant Yar goes to visit Yarina and they talk about the fight. Yar kind of tries to reason with her and says that, hey, I'm just doing this for the vaccine. I don't actually really love this guy. And Yarina kind of acts like a weird, spoiled teenager. And she's just like super in love with this guy who's trying to get her killed. She's like, no. He is mine. I can tell you what, my man. I will kill you. It's very weird, especially given, like, the, I don't know, like, the backhanded subtle racial dynamics to have this Yarina acting like a weird child, essentially, who doesn't have, like, a higher thought process. Kind of rubs you a weird way here in the 21st century. But anyway, Yar goes back to Picard and says, I'm gonna have to kill her. We see Yarina looking at weapons with the rest of the crew, and Jordy's like, careful, you might kill yourself. And then we hear sounds like a woman doing some calisthenics or practicing some physical activity in the background. Come around the corner, or the crew comes around the corner, rather, and they see Yarina uh, jumping around in a jungle gym. I think it's supposed to look like dangerous moves she's doing, but it's this, like, uneven kind of, like, monkey bars, and she's sort of flipping through them like your average fifth grader would. This is really, really silly looking and really stupid and really funny. A lot of the sets in this show look fantastic this is not one of those and then uh like four beams of light shoot out of it kind of like the luxor in las vegas and like shoot up toward the sky out of the uh lutan's palace this was not good this was uh very very bad we get Riker catching us up if uh you're in 1987 and you just happen to turn on the program. He tells tells us everything that's happened in the show so far. Then uh, Wesley Crusher comes on the bridge and Riker tells him to sit at Ops. We have a brief conversation between Data, Riker, and Dr. Crusher where they're talking about some, or they allude rather, to some secret communication with Picard. And we get this, the sense that there's some sort of plan afoot. And Riker talks about how razor sharp and the weapons are and how deadly the poison is. But there's clearly some kind of plan happening behind the scenes. And then we get to the fight. They're fighting with these, like, spiked glove things. It literally looks like uh, the Nintendo Power Glove, but it's got spikes all over it. In fact, that is possibly maybe what it was. Hagan announces the fight, and it's on. The fight is hilarious. It is terrible and hilarious. There's a few highlights. There's a part where a guard gets nicked by a weapon, and he does die, like, instantly. And that's just to kind of get over how dangerous the poison is. Uh, we get a reaction shot of uh, Picard looking, you know, stressed, and he's watching the action very carefully and intently. And then we get a shot of Lutan, and he's just like, eh, 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 like, kind of enjoying himself or whatever. But for the most part, it's just some very, very boring and slow choreography, and it's uh, just a terrible scene. Eventually, Yar wins. She is able to... Uh, Nick Yarina on the back and Yarina collapses and Yar falls on top of her and they immediately get beamed out to sickbay. Then as they're beaming the vaccine aboard, they beam Lutan back up to the Enterprise where he is uh, angry to discover that Yarina is in fact alive. Well, it turns out she was clinically legitimately dead, but Crusher's medicine was able to bring her back and he gets angry with her and he's like, oh, this is witchcraft and it's all that kind of like weird, kind of creepy racial undertone thing. But in any case, Yarina leaves them for the security guy, Hagon, and she makes Lutan her number two. So it's kind of a uh, 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 just desserts, if you will. And then Hagon tells Picard that while he excels in technology, he certainly does not excel in civilized behavior. And then we get Wesley at Ops again, and Picard comes in and he, blah, 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 what's this? And Riker says, yeah, he's been manning that station for me. And Picard says, oh, well, carry on then. And they set a course for Cyprus 4. Cyrus 4. Cyprus. Well, everybody said that this episode sucked, and guess what? This episode 
really sucked. I mean, besides just like the weird racial overtones, like the Lagonians are just like a boring ass alien race. Like, let's just take an Earth culture. Let's take a bunch of like buff black dudes and dress them up like Aladdin and the, the Thousand and One Arabian Nights or whatever it's called. And it's all for a vaccine for some planet that we've never seen and never heard of and probably never will again. So this series certainly started much stronger than this episode and I imagine it gets a lot, lot stronger from here. As I mentioned before, even the cast really doesn't like this one that much. But Jonathan Frakes, I believe, has actually tried to get this episode pulled from syndication. Unsuccessfully, obviously, because I just watched it on Prime. But anyways... That's it for now. Thank you for watching this episode of the TNG Project. Never said all these were gonna be good. There's probably gonna be some stinkers in there. Seven years of television, it's not gonna be this consistent, beautiful, perfect rainbow. Whatever, whatever that means. There's gonna be some ups and downs is what I'm getting at. So this was definitely one of the downs. But anyways, thanks for listening to me talk about it. If you're new here, go ahead and do, leave a like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you think about this episode. Don't get me in trouble with YouTube by, by saying any weird racial crap. I don't want to hear anything like that. But other than that, go to town. It's all free, free range. Like, comment, sub, and uh, we'll be back here soon with another episode of the TNG Project. Or perhaps something else before that. I don't know. I'm not very good at this. Anyways, this is your world-renowned historian. Be good, kiddos. Out.